Investments do not involve the rendering of personalized investment advice, but are limited to the dissemination of general information. A professional advisor should be consulted before implementing any of the options presented. Encompass More Asset Management is registered as an investment advisor with the SEC and only transacts business in states where it is properly registered or is excluded or exempted from registration requirements. Registration with the SEC does not imply a certain level of skill or training. And look, boys and girls, there they are. Clinton Smith, Galen Bargerstock with us this morning. GCES. Guys, good morning. Good morning. good morning. It's good to have you both with us here today. A couple of questions that listeners have asked me to ask you. And the first of those this morning is this. With the way the economy is, with inflation the way that it is, should that be affecting the way that I'm preparing for retirement? Because it's, you know, we hope temporary, but does it stay up here all this time? Does it continue to rise? How do I adjust or can I adjust my retirement savings in view of inflation and how bad it's been the last couple of years? So I think inflation is definitely, it was actually in the, it's in the number, the five biggest uh, mistakes or challenges that retirees face. Uh, inflation now, if you have $1,000 today and it keeps on track with the way inflation is right now, in 30 years, which some people are living 30 years in retirement, that $1,000 in 30 years is only going to be able to buy you like $520 worth of goods based off of how money is right now. So inflation is definitely one of the things that people need to be looking for uh, when they're definitely planning for retirement. Yeah. Galen, weigh in on that. Yeah, I, I mean, I have the same views. You know, inflation is definitely going to be there. But, you know, essentially, there's also going to be a lot of things that aren't there anymore when you retire. Usually, um, your home is paid off or, if not paid off, almost paid off. You know, that's one of the biggest questions I get. Should I finish paying off my home before I retire? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, yeah, inflation is going to be there. Yes, it will always be there. You know, it's not just a temporary thing right now. You know, 30 years from now, it's going to be an issue. It's always going to be an issue that things are going to cost more and more. So really, I think it's the way that you look at the market, um, how you're aggressive, how you should be playing the market. You know, should you be aggressive? Should you be more conservative to try to get you a bigger return? Um, put it as a concern, but also, you know, it is going to be there. Yeah. And and I assume as well that where you are on your retirement ladder yep. is, is also going to play a role in, in how you view inflation. If You know, if you're uh, somebody in their 30s or 40s, it's going to be different from somebody who's in their 50s and 60s. Yeah. 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 I mean, you have to roll with the punches. Like, uh, I always loved doing appointments online. I, that's something that I liked. I thought it was going to be great when I got my first tablet. Unfortunately, nobody really caught on till it until COVID, till something major happened, mm -hmm. and then everybody had to go online because they still had to retire. So you're not going to stop the process. Life is still going to keep on going no matter what hits you. Yeah. I, I would say just at the end, when you retire, you don't want to have it where you haven't considered inflation. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you have to take it into consideration whenever you start planning your retirement. It's going to be there. There are ways to combat it. You know, it's different for every person based off of the things that are available to you and how much money you have. But really, it's all in preparing and actually looking at the money and knowing what you have and being prepared for anything. All right. All right. So that was the first question yep. that I was asked to ask you. The other is this. Somebody who said, um, my son is going right from high school and into the work field uh, and, and has a really nice job. Uh, and, and the question was, should now be when somebody who is that young begins thinking about retirement? Absolutely. Really? Yes. Yeah. Really? What should that person be thinking about retirement? Well, it, it, they should, like, I'm assuming if they're getting a really good job, they're probably going to have some sort of investment account, probably not a pension, um, but they're probably going to have something they, they can contribute into. So they should find out first what is the matching, at least do the matching amount that their employer is going to do, and then at that time, kind of, you know, get somebody, a, a professional's advice on a risk tolerance of where you should be at in the market. Just don't be, oh, well, target date funds, you know, everybody's in a target date fund, um, it seems nowadays. So if you're retiring around, you know, 2055, you know, it's as if you should be as an aggression based statistically if you're retiring around 2025. So, you know, you need to establish the plan at the very beginning the more aggressive you are when you're younger, 
the more time you have to recoup if the market dips down and comes back up. So mm -hmm. I, I like going all in the younger you are. That's just my personal style um, because if you have 30 years, 40 years before you retire, you have plenty of time to make that up. There are a lot of people that don't start saving until they hit like 40. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're in the business and we didn't start our own 401k until like last year, yeah. you know, and I just turned 40. So for somebody that can start whenever they're 18, 19, 20, they're going to end up having twice as much as what we do in retirement if they start at 20 rather than 40. So mm -hmm. it's really just being prepared. That person, if they start at 20, probably is going to be able to retire earlier, have more money. And in the end, the outcome is there's no reason that that outcome, there's nothing going to happen bad. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like there's no bad outcome if you start when you're 20. And I know just from talking to family members and stuff, there's a lot of people. There's, uh, I mean, linemen. There's tons of coal mines and stuff like that are still – kids can walk right out of high school and make $120,000 a year, and people get out of college and don't even make that entering, and they have tons of student debt. So going into a trade or something like that can be very beneficial. You can still have a good retirement without having a college degree. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because the question that was asked to me was by someone whose son is going to be a lineman. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 So and and we hear welding is is another great field for that the kids are just coming out right out of high school and stepping into really really good jobs. Yeah. yeah. Try to find a plumber or an HVAC person to come help you out today. <laughs> you know, uh, those are definitely good industries to get into. And a lot of people think, oh, well, I need to go to college to have a great retirement. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. People that end up going straight out of high school and going straight into working end up having more of a net worth typically than people that do get degrees. Mm -hmm. All right, so play off of that a little bit. A few years ago, there was this artificial effort to drive up the stock prices of uh, some um, maybe underperforming stocks or, or under-the-radar stocks, uh, and a bunch of kids actually bought into those stocks, got in and got back out, took a, a nice little windfall. Um, when something like that happens and, and, and a young person comes into uh, possession of uh, uh, a fairly substantial amount of money, especially for a young person, what should they do with that money? Pay taxes. Buy, ex <laughs> buy Xbox. Make sure you pay the taxes first and then <laughs> buy the an taxes. Xbox, whatever you want. But, uh, you know, we've had a lot of people that talk about stocks. And, yes, you can make money. And, yes, you can, like, get in and out and make money quick. But you can also lose a lot of money very quick, too. If we're yeah. talking volatility – Stocks are like the highest volatility level, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Uh, you can lose a ton of money. I remember this was like 10, 15 years ago. Everyone said to buy Corsa coal stocks. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Everyone in my family bought it. Everyone around us was buying them. And it went from like 60 cents to a dollar. That's when we bought it. And then it went down to a penny and it hasn't returned since. Uh -huh. So everyone that we know lost money on that. We pulled money out of our old TSP that we had from when we were in the military and put money into that. Everyone lost everything that they put in. Yeah. That's the bad side of it. You know, mm -hmm. that can definitely happen. So I wouldn't recommend people play with stocks unless you really have money that you can lose. But people do make money off of it. Number one thing you should do is pay taxes on it. That way uh, you don't get in trouble with Uncle Sam. And then after that, do whatever you want with it. Put it into retirement. Spend it. Yeah. You know, it's probably not going to be happening constantly yeah. do you know this what I mean? was the gamestop thing a couple of years ago when gamestop they drove its price up artificially high and then yeah people jumped in and jumped right back out and they were okay yeah some people jumped in and thought i'm going to hold and uh, and when they held uh, all of a sudden they lost a bunch of money which is just what you were just yeah. saying clinton it's we did the same thing with blockbuster stock <laughs> <laughs> by the way you've got some late fees i understand yes, that you yeah, need to be paying yeah. To our poor friends at Blockbuster. All right, so those are some some offbeat uh, type of re uh, in retirement type of questions uh, that folks might have. Um, but you know, here are all these young folks that are entering into the job market right now. Uh, they're carrying a bunch of student loan debt with them. Yeah. They they'd love to get rid of that student loan debt because it you know obviously impacts uh, their ability to save in the future. Um, but all of this is stuff that you can plan for, isn't it? Yeah, I mean. It the student loan debt, I mean, honestly, I think that it should be explained a little bit better to a person when they're in high school about what they're actually getting themselves into. Mm -hmm. um, because the debt that is, you know, it consumes your life because you're having these monthly payments going out. It was so bad for me 
that the student loan companies were calling like six months after I graduated, still no job, um, and I joined the military. So I did it the old school way where I had the military pay my student loans, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, nowadays, you know, people are hoping for loan relief from the government, which is, you know, it's good. It's going to help people out. But, you know, honestly, it's that that debt that you're taking right at the very beginning that hurts a person because you're trying to dig yourself out right at the very beginning. Yeah. And that's why the trade schools, you know, it is I don't want to say they're free because you're still paying to go to a trade school, but it's going to be cheaper, less debt. And then you're going to start with a career, most likely, and mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot easier for you to handle. Yeah. Starting out in a hole is uh, is obviously not the you know, no. the easiest thing in life to do. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty much what everybody's doing right now. Yeah. 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 One of the other biggest challenges in retirement, I would think, would be volatility. You know, uh, like those events where no one sees it coming, like uh, the pandemic. You know that that affected the stock market. It affected pe affected people's retirement. It affected people's ability to retire. And that's one of the things that is also hard. That's one of the other challenges for retirement. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. That, that's something that people, uh, you know, you get into these things, and uh, well, here comes something down the road that nobody saw. Yeah. And and all of a sudden you have to make adjustments. But uh, Galen, of course, uh, you're in the business of setting people up so that. Uh, should they take an unexpected hit like that, yeah. uh, it won't devastate them. Yeah, and that's why the, the younger you are when you start that plan, the plan is going to be less affected, you know, two years out from retirement and inflation skyrockets because you've been planning for 30 years. Yeah. So I think the best thing to take away from this is if you're 30, if you're 40, don't wait. Start now because it's going to be easier for the, to do the obstacles later in life if mm -hmm. you're prepared. Yeah. All right. So for folks that want to get started in that respect and uh, figure out just how they're going to approach retirement, whether they're very young or they're getting toward retirement age, what should they be thinking with GCES? Uh, you can give us a call 724-915-0000. You can visit us on Facebook. Uh, it's under GCES. Uh, you can also stop into our office, 1780 Philadelphia Street. Someone's there pretty much nine to five every day. Mm -hmm. Podcast going well? Uh just getting started. Just getting rolling? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, look forward to hearing more about that. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. 24 minutes after 8 o'clock. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM, AM 1160, WCCSradio.com. Coming up, Boomer Sports in just a second or so, and then it is a visit from the WCCS Newsroom with Josh. This is Boomer and Science with the Sports Minute, sponsored by Napa Silent Guard Brakes. The thoroughbred racing world calls him the coach. And Saturday, 88-year-old Hall of Famer D. Wayne Lucas became the oldest trainer to win a triple crown race when Seize the Gray held off Kentucky Derby winner Mystic Dan to capture the 149th Preakness Stakes. I'm Boomer and Science. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. So we build specially adapted homes at Homes for Our Troops. And thanks to our donors and supporters, this life-changing gift of freedom is provided mortgage-free to these veterans. But we need you to join us, too, in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. On the battlefield, there's